The U.S. military's Indo-Pacific Command has sought a fund of $27.4 billion to build a network of precision strike missiles. It submitted the core proposal titled Pacific Deterrence Initiative PDI, to Congress. The idea is to enhance its conventional deterrence against China. The plan envisages developing and deploying these missiles along the first island chain on the west of the International Dateline IDL, over the next six years. IDL is an imaginary line of demarcation on the Earth's surface running from the North Pole to the South Pole. It's an investment plan for fiscal 2022 through fiscal 2027. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes how the U.S. plans to ward off the Chinese threat by building a network of precision strike missiles in Indo-Pacific. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by the free-to-play military vehicle combat game War Thunder. We talk a lot about military vehicles on this channel, but what about trying them out for yourself? In War Thunder, you can choose from more than 1,200 playable vehicles from the 1930s to the 1990s and go to battle on more than 80 theaters of war. You can fly aircraft, helicopters, drive tanks, and command ships of all types and sizes, which have been carefully recreated from their real-world counterparts. It's available as a free download on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support. So grab your friends and give it a try. All viewers of Defense Updates that register using the link in the description below will also get a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship and three days of premium account time as a bonus. In a speech at the Washington-based think tank American Enterprise Institute, Admiral Philip Davidson, commander of the U.S. Indo-Pacific Command, said there are concerns about the next six years as a period when China may look to change the status quo in the region, such as with Taiwan. He said there is a fundamental understanding that the period between now and 2026, this decade, is the time horizon in which China is positioned to achieve overmatch in its capacity, and when Beijing could, could, widely choose to forcibly change the status quo in the region. And I would say the change in that status quo could be permanent, he said. The six-year total of $27.4 billion represents a 36% increase over planned spending for that period as of fiscal 2020. This reflects a growing alarm over Chinese activity in the region. Viewers may note the first island chain consists of a group of islands including Taiwan, Okinawa, and the Philippines. China sees it as the first line of defense. Beijing's anti-access area denial strategy seeks to push American forces out of the East and South China Seas within the first island chain. This includes deployment of long-range air defense systems as well as anti-ship missile batteries. China also seeks to keep U.S. forces from approaching the second island chain in the Western Pacific, which runs from southeastern Japan out to Guam and south to Indonesia. The document stated, The greatest danger to the future of the United States continues to be an erosion of conventional deterrence. The document said, Without a valid and convincing conventional deterrent, China is emboldened to take action in the region and globally to supplant U.S. interests. As the Indo-Pacific's military balance becomes more unfavorable, the U.S. accumulates additional risk that may embolden adversaries to unilaterally attempt to change the status quo. Specifically, it called for the fielding of an integrated joint force with precision strike networks west of the International Dateline along the first island chain, integrated air missile defense in the second island chain, and a distributed force posture that provides the ability to preserve stability and, if needed, dispense and sustain combat operations for extended periods. The U.S. has been hindered by the INF Treaty. The INF Treaty was signed by Ronald Reagan and Mikhail Gorbachev in 1987. It banned ground launch missiles with ranges of 500 kilometers to 5,500 kilometers. That's 310 to 3,420 miles. The INF Treaty eliminated around 2,700 nuclear and conventional missiles as well as their launchers. This was achieved by May 1991. 
This included short-range missiles with 310 to 620 miles, that's 500 to 1,000 kilometer range, and intermediate-range missiles with 620 to 3,420 miles, that's 1,000 to 5,500 kilometer range. The INF Treaty had significant opposition in America's power circle. Harry Harris, the former commander of U.S. Pacific Command, who is now U.S. Ambassador to South Korea, is one of them. In testimony submitted to Congress last year, Harris pointed to several important aspects. He noted that China is not a signatory of any treaty like this and used it to develop a large arsenal of missiles. As per him, the Chinese rocket forces has more than 2,000 ballistic and cruise missiles, almost 95 percent of which would violate the INF treaty if China was a signature. Amidst continued growth of China's missile forces, then U.S. President Donald Trump announced on the 20th of October 2018 that he was withdrawing the U.S. from the treaty due to supposed Russian noncompliance. Since the withdrawal, the U.S. has tested several missiles that would not have been possible when the INF treaty was in force. In August 2019, the Pentagon stated that the U.S. military successfully tested a conventionally configured ground-launched cruise missile at San Nicolas Island, California. The U.S. Department of Defense said the missile accurately impacted its target after more than 500 kilometers (311 miles) of flight. As per reports, the missile was launched from Mark 41 vertical launch system. Another option being developed is Lockheed Martin's Precision Strike Missile, or PRSM. The latest test was carried out in April 2020, and it went well. The success brought the ongoing testing record of PRSM to 3 for 3. Two previous tests took place in December and March 2019. The missile is expected to reach initial operational capability in 2023. There is a concern in Washington that China could take a hostile step in the next few years, especially when it comes to Japan and Taiwan. The animosity between Japan and China has increased, with China trying to wrest control of the Senkaku Islands. The U.S. is Japan's ally and is bound by the Treaty of Mutual Cooperation and Security to come to Japan's aid in case Japan faces aggression from an external party. China has threatened to bring Taiwan under its fold, even if it requires the use of force. In recent times, it's increased the pressure by frequently sending military jets and warships. The relation between Taiwan and the United States is unofficial and informal and is governed by the Taiwan Relations Act. The Taiwan Relations Act is designed to maintain ambiguity and does not state if the USA will or will not intervene militarily if the PRC attacks or invades Taiwan. Under the act, the U.S. is obligated to sell arms of a defensive character to Taiwan. Keeping everything in view, it will be prudent for the U.S. to increase its offensive capability in the region. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.